Did y'all know that Christ is this um, so-called black man? How did you know that? Say it again. Can you prove it though? Can you prove it? You can't prove it. So if you can't prove it, automatically, and <laughs> you believe in this image right here. All that matters. To you. Let's get that in Revelation 1 to 14. We're going to bring the Bible to life. This is not our word. We just messengers. Vessel unto the most high God. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It said Jesus, it's talking about Jesus Christ's head and hairs were white like wool. Now who on planet earth got woolly hair? Read up. Bam, you can look, look at your beard. Look at your hair, you take off your hat, bam. You got woolly hair, not stringy hair. But this is a more on the picture of Jesus the Christ. Read. As white as snow. Uh -huh. His eyes were as a like were as a flame of fire. So his eyes was a flame of fire because he drank wine in moderation. Right. His first miracle was making water into wine. What? That's what he did. That's what he did. That's it cause if you drink, you do a little, little drink, the white is our eye, they'll turn red. That's what it's going into. Read. And his feet like a to fine brass. No, he's talking about Christ's feet. He said his feet like a to fine brass. So what color is brass? Like a penny. Right, he, he absolutely right. It's like a penny. So that's kind of like a golden brown looking. So to say, if I see the feet, it's the same color as his leg, his arm, his neck, his face, right? So Christ was like a dark, um, look, um, so-called dark skinned man, read. Right? As if they burned in the furnace. So if you throw anything, how you doing, brother? We're going over the description of Jesus the Christ. Jesus Christ looked like you and I. He had woolly hair like this brother right here. What's your name, bro? My name's Samson. What's your name? Quail. Trail. My name's Samson. We're going over the description of Christ because, look, we were taught this image right here. We were taught this image in our churches, in our grandmother houses. But this ain't the Jesus the Christ right here. Jesus the Christ is like us. The so I'm saying, from the tribe of Judah. That's where he's from, read. Right? And his voice has the sound of many waters. That means Christ, he spoke, he spoke loud. He didn't have no soft pitched voice. So that is our description of Jesus the Christ. He is not a, a so-called Caucasian. He's not a white man. He a black man like you and I, thus says the Lord. Now, what the Most High God want to require of you, he wants you to keep his commandments. That's what he wants you to do. Give me first king. How to be a man. Let me ask you a question. How to be a man. My brother right here, how you be a man? Say take care of your family. Okay, somebody else? You said walking the ways of the Lord, okay. Okay, okay. Let's get let's get the definition of being a man according to this Bible. Read. The book of First Kings, chapter 2 and verse 2. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and shew thyself a man. Now the Bible to show you how to show yourself a man. Read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways. To keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses. Thou, thou mayest prosper and all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. You see that? Being a man is keeping the commandments of the Most High God. That's what being a man is. Question, are we prospering as a people right now? No, 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 no. So are we men right now? No, because are we keeping God's commandments as a nation? Think about it. To collectively, name one of God's commandments. Come, come close. You say, thou shall not steal. In the Ten Commandments, which number is that? What? No, that's the problem. <laughs> you understand? I love you, 
But this is what I'm talking about. We don't know all of God's commandments. He just, I guess he's mad or whatnot, who cares? But this is what I'm talking about. When it comes to men, this is how we deal. When it comes to this Bible, we're supposed to know this thing like that. We shouldn't be dependent on the same people who put us in slavery to teach us the word of God. Right. Don't y'all think that's a little backwards? The same people who had you on cargo slave ships, the same one who taught you the Bible? So let me ask you this. Who y'all think this Bible belonged to? Who is it for everybody? God love everybody? Yeah, you got, I know you I had a feeling you had, you feeling that. What about you, my brother? What about y'all too? God love everybody? No? So who does Bible belong to? Huh? You said it belonged to the white man? For real? Give me Revelations uh, 13 and 10. Bring it up. I'm going to show you something real quick. You tell me, why would the white man write this if it belonged to him? Start at verse 9. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. I see two, four, six, eight. I see eight ears. So did y'all hear that? It said, if you got an ear, say, listen up. Come on. He that leadeth into captivity. It says, he that leadeth into captivity. Do y'all know what captivity is? Huh? Any form of slavery. Any form of slavery. That's what captivity is. You understand that, right? Read it again. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. White man wrote that? You, you said it's a white man's book. I'm talking to you. Nope. White man wrote that? Huh? See, because hey, you think about it. Hold on, wait a second. If the white man wrote it, why would he say that he going into captivity? Huh? You're not making any sense. The white man is going into captivity. That's what we just read. So why would the white man depict his own demise? He wouldn't. So who wrote it? The black man. Give me uh, Psalms 50 and 16. See, now you think he's like, hold on, wait a second. No. White man, would, would the white man willingly ever go into slavery? No. He would kill everybody before that happened. We've seen him do it. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 16. But unto the wicked, God saith. God says unto the wicked. Guess what? In particular, this is the wicked on the earth. Right. Right. This is the wicked on the earth. They crucified our Lord and Savior's image throughout the whole world. You know? They got everybody believing that God is white, Jesus is white, and that the angels are white. But God says he's black. Right. Christ is black. And so are the angels, and so are the people of God. Yeah, right. you know? They are the wicked. Why? Because they put out that deception out throughout all of the earth. Now, well, you, uh, read that again. Watch this. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? So what is he saying? You see this right here? Look, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Twelve tribes of Israel. So-called blacks. Where are you going? You got to go to work? What time? So you got to go to Georgia. All right, my brother. Ah, oh, I don't hear that. All right, you, hey, I guarantee you this. What, what tribe, before, before I ask the question, what tribe are you from? Um, Come here. Come here. This is important. Stop playing. Stop playing, bro. You're an American black. That's what the Bible say? That's in the Bible? It's, I know you don't know. So stand right there and learn. According to the Bible, you're from the tribe of Judah. Yeah, right. Do you know who else came from Judah? Do you know? I know you don't know. So watch this. All right, my brother? You need to pay attention. Quit playing. We've been playing for over 400 years. And look where it got us. On the bottom. So now is the time to learn how to be a man according to the Bible. Right. Hebrews 7 and 14, they go back to Psalms 50. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Evident means obvious. Means you have evidence. It's obvious that our Lord. Now we're going to deal with what the Bible says. It says our Lord. What book are you reading? The book of Hebrews. The what? The book of Hebrews. The what? 
the book of Hebrew. Is that everybody? Who is that? The who? And the Hebrews are who? The Israelites. So read the verse again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord. That what? Our Lord. That our what? Our Lord. It's evidence that the Hebrews, Lord, sprang out of what? Judah. Meaning what? That's only the Lord of the Hebrews. Right. You understand that? Is he the savior of everybody? Huh? Is he the savior of everybody? How you know that? He's the Hebrews Lord and Savior. Beautiful. So who are the Hebrews? Who are the Israelites? Who is that? Now I see it. You're like, oh, I don't I don't know. But you're so quick to walk away, but you don't know. Right, leaving, hey, well, you better tell your ride to come over here and learn too. Hey, y'all crazy as hell. My brother, <laughs> who are the Israelites? Huh? Judah. That's a tribe of the nation of Israel. Who are the Judites today? I know you don't know the so called blacks here in America. They are the Israelites. We're trying to tell you the most important information ever out there. Right. Isaiah 1 and 3. Bring it up. Bring it up. You ain't no nigga. You're not a black man. You're an Israelite man. Right. According to the Bible. Watch this. This is We're not playing with any of you. This is important information. If you don't want it, if you want to continue to be lost, go up. ahead. Bring it up. We don't, hey, do what you do. But we out here for you. Right. Read it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. The Bible says the Israelites today, they would not know who they are. Remember when I just asked you who are the Judites? You said you don't know. That's Bible prophecy. That the real Israelites, they would not know their nationality. You thought that you were an African American. God just told you that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. Read it again. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel do not know. My people do not consider. God's people. Do you know who God's people are? Who's us? You say blacks, just blacks? See, that's why, that's why I ask you those questions. Give me that Matthew 2, 6. You got it? The book of Matthew, chapter 2 and verse 6. And thou Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. That shall rule who? My people. Read. Israel. Yeah, right. The only people of God are the Israelites. So come back right here so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. They are God's people. That's right. According to the Bible, everybody, you know the Chinese, they're not God's people. The Arabs, they're not God's people. So-called white men, they're not God's people. But the reason why you think that is because they gave you this. Right. Can you see this? What is that? No, nah, who do they say? Oh my God. Who do they say he is? Right. So are they lying or is the Bible lying? They lie. So what color is Christ? How do you know that? Read it again. We're going over this for a reason. Because you'll get in the car and forget everything you just taught. Because we're reading out the Bible. We're going over this not for you just to stand there. No. So you can be a man and take responsibility and focus. Because we don't like to focus. We just like to walk through life and just do whatever we want to do without a care. God is calling real men of God to stand up, change their lives, and lead their people. But we can't do that if we are forgetful hearers. Hold that. Give me John. No, James 1 and 22. You got to be serious. This got to mean something to you. It's the most important thing you could ever hear. Do you love God? Okay, what color is God? But you didn't know that before, did you? Tell the truth. You just assumed it. All right, watch this. How you doing, my brother? Read this. 
The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Right, you got to be a doer. What the Bible, we right? We got to be doers of the words of God. Read it again. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Deceiving your own self. You be deceiving your own selves. Read. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. Meaning what? You would see your natural self, you understand, your carnal self, instead of seeing the spiritual man that God wants you to be. Right. Give me Romans 2.13. He does not want us to forget the things that we hear. Right. Because this right here, whenever we read this Bible, that's life. You understand? These are the words of God speaking yeah, life into right. us. Bring read it, it. The book of Romans, chapter 2 and verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. If you hear this, you ain't did nothing. All you did is hear it. A lot of people, they go to the Sunday church. Oh, I just want to hear a word of God. But they don't do a damn thing that's in the Bible. Right. Right. Am I lying? No. Read it again. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. The doers, meaning what? You have to hear and then apply. That's right. That's right. Hebrews 2 and 1. You have to hear and then apply. Don't just let what we read in go in one ear and out the other. Now, process it. It's like, you know what? I'm going to read it for myself. I'm going to, hey, you know what? What scripture was that? Let me write it down. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 1. Watch what God is speaking, uh, saying to y'all right now. Read. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. You ought to do what? Give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Meaning what? Earnest meaning what? You're paying close attention. You got to pay close attention to the things that you hear out the Bible. Read. Lest at any time. We should let them slip. Because if you don't pay close attention, if it's not important to you, it will slip. Meaning this, we just read that Christ is a black man according to the Bible. Yes, right. But if you don't take it seriously and pay attention, you're going to go right back to believing that he was a white man. Right. That's what's going to happen. Because haven't they deceived us, my brother, to make us think that this is true? from a Christian point of view, yes. There you go. Because they hammer this into us. Me and him, we get some trouble. Okay, so you understand that. They hammer this image, but we got to do what? We got to hammer the Bible. Absolutely, my brother. Joshua 1 and 8, the 2 Timothy 2, 15. We have to hammer the words of God into our mind. Right. And not be so quick to follow after what the white man has set up. Bring it out. Read it. The book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. How often? Day and night. Does a typical black man even read the Bible for the most part? No. But God said the Israelite man, he's supposed to meditate day and night. Right. 2 Timothy 2.15. That's what the Bible say. You understand? Well, all we're trying to do is show you what God's saying. Right. And we honestly trying to show you that we've been lied to as a people. Because we reading out the book. This is not in the book. I dare anybody, I challenge anybody to show me that Jesus is white in the Bible. Right. It's not in there. Right. But yet, when we ask our people what color is Christ, we have no idea. Right. When the Bible clearly explains that he's a black man with woolly hair. Right. Read what you got. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved. You got to study to show yourself approved. Right. Read. Unto God. Unto who? God. Read. A workman that need him not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What is the truth according to the Bible? John 8 and 32. Bring it up. Bring it up. Do you know what the truth is according to the Bible? You have an idea? Say what, say what now? All right, what you got? What you got? What's the truth? I mean, they just don't learn fight for the man. That's it. It's a huge one. But what's the truth? Who knows? Who knows? All right, so we're going to give you the truth today in a matter of two minutes. I hope so. Yeah, I got to be working. Watch this. 
the book of John, chapter 8 and verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 17 and 17. And then, uh, yeah, Psalms. Give me one in Psalms first. And then John 17. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And thy laws, God's laws, they're the truth. That's the truth that's going to break us free. Break us free from what? Captivity. If you want to be free, keep God's commandments. John 17, come on. The book of John, chapter 17 and verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Sanctify us through thy truth. Read. Thy word is truth. The words of God is the truth. Meaning what? We can put an end to this lie by simply reading the words of God. That's right. Hey, did you get a flyer? Hey, reach out. Now, what's your name, bro? You say Tony? All right, Tony, my name Matt. Nice to meet you, Tony. What did you learn so far? Because I make sure I got to make sure you giving an earnest heed to what you're learning. Huh? is not white. Okay. That's excellent. Give me a second, Ezra's 14 and 13. So now we're going to go over how to build a strong black man. We're going to go over how to build a strong black man, all right? Watch this, 2nd Ezra 14 and verse 13, come on. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 13. Now therefore, set thine house in order. So now you know these things, right? So it's not just about you. There's other things that you gotta do. You gotta set your house in order. You got any kids? Got three, you got a uh, wife, girlfriend. So you're single right now. All right, so you got to make sure you're teaching your children. You understand? Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 7. How you doing, my sister? How you doing, sis? We're going over how to become a righteous black man and woman according to the Bible. And let's see if what we've been doing was right or what we were doing was wrong. Deuteronomy 6 and 7, come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 7. Come on. And thou shalt teach them diligently until thy children. We shall teach what diligently to our children? The laws of God. Right. The laws of God. Give me that in uh, Leviticus 19 and 29. I'm going to show you something real quick. Because when it came, comes to our black daughters, we have failed. When it comes to our black daughters, we have failed. I'm going to show you why. Leviticus 19 and 29. Watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Now let me ask both of y'all. What are some ways we could prostitute our daughters? Think about it. We're not talking about putting them on a corner and selling them. What, are we, what, are we, what is the Bible really saying here? Materialistic things. What do you have to say, sis? What do you think? But you, you, since you should be, you should be one of the first people. I know you got to be at least late 30s, 40s. You're supposed to be an older sister that teaches the young woman what to do. So give me an example, sis. We out here for the healing of our people. Because we fail. God says, don't prostitute thy daughters. But we're doing it. But we got to be able to identify how we're doing that. What are some of the things we're doing that prostitutes our daughters? How about this? How about this? Taking them to prom. Allowing them to go to prom. Because we all know what's going to happen prom night. That young, horny teenager is going to get up in her skirt. That's what's going to happen. How about this? We allow our young daughters to wear spandex. And walk up and down the street showing their vagina print. That's another way we prostitute our daughters. God said the woman... The Israelite woman is supposed to dress modest. That's right. That's right. Modest. Give me that in 1 Timothy 2 9. Get out. Get out. Before that, give me Proverbs 7 and 10. Because a lot of people don't realize there is a dress code for a modest woman and there's a dress code for a hoe. Right. Right. A lot of our sisters and our daughters don't get a chance to become modest because they are raised as hoes and dots. Right. Right. Read it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7 and verse 10. Come on. And behold, 
there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. The attire of a harlot, attire goes into your wardrobe. What is a harlot? A whore. Right. That's what a harlot is. Read it again. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. Read. And subtle of heart. Deceitful. That's how our young daughters are raised these days. Right. They're raised to be deceitful, to get a man to take his money and spread their legs. First right. Timothy 2 9. Read it. The book of First Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 9. Read. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. The black woman who is the Israelite woman, she's supposed to adorn herself in modest apparel. Yes. Modest is not showing any sexual attention to yourself. Right. Give me Titus 2 and 3. Get out. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise. The what? The aged women likewise. The young women. That the aged women likewise. The aged women in our community have a place in the Bible. Right. You have a place. Let's read about it. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness. They should be in behavior as cometh holiness. Read. Not false accusers. Read. Not giving too much wine. Come on. Teachers of good things. They got to be teachers of good things. There's two ways to teach. Yep. There's two ways to teach. You could be verbal or you could teach by your example. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.